Ethiopian the Assyrian was born in Assyria, a territory in present-day Iraq. He was an early Christian writer and theologian who left behind many valuable works. At first he was a pagan, but during his visit in Rome he met with the Christians and accepted Christianity as well. He left a number of polemics with the pagans. Later he stayed in other countries and in his final years came back to Assyria where he passed away around 195. One of his most popular works is known by the name Tatian's Address to the Greeks, where he criticizes the ancient Greek authors for assigning values to the Greeks that they did not objectively deserve. He lists which segments of science and art the Greeks took from other nations and later proclaimed them as their own. His stances at the time can be acclaimed to many other present-day Greek authors as well. Let's give an extract from one of his works. The Greeks claim, without reason, the invention of the arts. Be not, O Greeks, so very hostilely disposed towards the barbarians, nor look with ill will on their opinions. For which of your institutions has not been derived from the barbarians? The most eminent of the Telmessians invented the art of divining by dreams, the Carians that of prognosticating by the stars, the Phrygians and the most ancient Isarians augury by the flight of birds, the Cyprians the art of inspecting victims, to the Babylonians, you owe astronomy. To the Persians, magic. To the Egyptians, geometry. To the Phoenicians, instruction by alphabetic writing. Cease then to miscall these imitations, inventions of your own. Orpheus again taught you poetry and song. From him too you learned the mysteries. The Tuscans taught you the plastic art. From the annals of the Egyptians you learned to write history. You acquired the art of playing the flute by Marcius and Olympus. These two rustic Phrygians constructed the harmony of the shepherd's pipe. The Tyrrhenians invented the trumpet. The Cyclopes the smith's art and a woman who was formerly a queen of the Persians, as Hellenicus tells us, the method of joining together epistolary tablets. Her name was Atossa. Wherefore lay aside this conceit, and be not ever boasting of your elegance of diction, for while you applaud yourselves, your own people will of course side with you. But it becomes a man of sense to wait for the testimony of others. And it becomes men to be of one accord also in the pronunciation of their language. But, as matters stand, to you alone it has happened not to speak alike even in common intercourse. For the way of speaking among the Dorians is not the same as that of the inhabitants of Attica, nor do the Aeolonians speak like the Ionians. And since such a discrepancy exists, where it ought not to be, I am at a loss whom to call a Greek. And, what is strangest of all, you hold in honor expressions not of native growth, and by the intermixture of barbaric words have made your language a medley. You have, too, contrived the art of rhetoric to serve injustice and slander, selling the free power of your speech for hire, and often representing the same thing at one time as right 
at another time as not good. The poetic art, again, you employ to describe battles and the armors of the gods and the corruption of the soul. For the subject we're covering, we can clearly see that while mentioning the Greek dialects, this early Christian writer does not mention the Macedonian language as a Greek dialect. Suzominus was another author who wrote about the ancient Macedonians. He lived near the end of the 4th century until the middle of the 5th century. He was a historian of the Christian Church. He descended from a wealthy Christian family from Palestine. In his works, he mentioned the Macedonians several times, clearly separating them from the Greeks. For example, in his work Ecclesiastical History, referring to the battle between Constantine the Great and Licinius, which took place in 314, he writes After the battle of Sibylus, the Dardanians and the Macedonians, the inhabitants of the banks of the Ister, of Hellas, and the whole nation of Illyria, became subject to Constantine. We can see that the Macedonians are treated as a separate nation, and Greece, Hellas, is mentioned separately. While referring to the Christianing of the Balkan peoples, taking place during the reign of Constantine the First the Great, 306 to 337, Suzominus wrote, The Christians of the West, the Greeks, the Macedonians, and the Illyrians met for worship in safety through the protection of Constantine, who was then at the head of the Roman Empire. Here too we will point out that it is more than obvious that the term Macedonians is used in an ethnic and not geographical sense, because it's used equally with the ethnical terms Illyrians and Greeks. So, it is quite clear that the ancient Macedonians lived in Macedonia in the 4th century as a separate nation to the other Balkan peoples. These statements are just enough to consider Sozomenos as part of the ancient historians who decisively wrote that the Macedonians were not Greeks.